Hi boys and girls, this is Miss White. Today I will be reading you the last three chapters of our Jeannie B. Jones Dumb Bunny book. Now, on the last video, we ended on chapter seven, um, Polite Rules. And remember, Jeannie B. Jones um, was trying to decide if she'd like being the Easter Bunny at the party or not. So let's find out. I looked down at myself. My bunny feet were bigger than clown feet. Also, my ears were foppish, and my bunny hands looked like giant paw mitts. I held them out in front of me. I could take a pie out of the oven with these things, I said. Lucille skipped around me and clapped. Yay, yay, yay. We have a bunny. We have a bunny, she sang real happy. After that, she grabbed my bunny paw, and she started skipping me to the flower garden. Only too bad for me, because skipping with giant bunny feet does not actually work that good. And so, kerplop, I fell right over in the grass. Some of the children started to laugh. Lucille shooed them away. Then she quick hurried to pick me up. Only her dress started to get wrinkly, and so she dropped me in the grass again. And then she smoothed her skirt very neat. Plus also, she fluffed her hair and she shined her shoes. After that, she yelled to her daddy real urgent. And so there they are. Lucille. And then there's Jeannie B down there on the ground in her bunny costume. <laughs> daddy, daddy, the bunny's down. Come get the bunny. Come get the bunny. The daddy ran over and picked me up. Then he started carrying me to the flower garden. It felt embarrassing up there. I tapped on his head. This does not actually make me feel like a celebrity, I said. The daddy kept on going. I tapped on his head again. No one actually carries Santa, I said. Just then, we got to the flower garden. The daddy put me down, and he showed me the photographer. His name was Bud. Bud sat me in my bunny seat, and he arranged my floppy ears. After that, he went to his camera, and he took my picture. Beautiful, he said. Gorgeous. I smiled. I like this bud. Pretty soon, the children lined up to get their pictures taken with me. And guess what? My bestest friend named Herbert was the very first one in line. He zoomed to my seat real happy. I think you look nice in that bunny costume, he said. You don't even look stupid. Hardly. I smiled again. Thank you, Herbert. You don't look stupid, too, I said back. After that, both of us said cheese, and Bud took our picture. Lenny came next. Then, after Lenny, came Jose. And after Jose came Shirley, and after Shirley came all the other children in room one. Except for not May. Instead, May sat in the grass all by herself because she was not a celebrity, of course. I said cheese a million times. Bud kept on saying beautiful and gorgeous to me. I felt very puffery inside. I am an excellent celebrity, I told him. I am making these children's day. Bud laughed. <laughs> I do not know why. Finally, all the pictures got taken. Bud shook my paw mitt goodbye. I will miss him. After that, Herb and I walked back to the picnic grounds. And wait till you hear this. Lucille's mother was passing out baskets for the egg hunt. I started to run to get my basket. Only what do you know, kerplop? I tripped and fell in the grass again. The children laughed some more. I pretended I didn't care. It's fun to fall, I said real stupid. Even Herb rolled his eyes at that one. Lucille's mother helped me up and gave me a basket. I looked at her very upset. Yeah, only how am I supposed to hunt for eggs in these big giant bunny feet, I said. I can't even run in these clumsy things. Plus also, I can't tackle or scuffle. The mother looked shocked at me. Tackle, she said. Scuffle, oh my no. This is going to be a polite egg hunt, Jeannie B. There will be no running or tackling or scuffling. 
we're going to behave like little ladies and gentlemen. Just then, there was a loud commotion behind me. I turned around. May was pointing and yelling at Sheldon and Lucille. Stop whispering secrets, Lucille, she shouted. You're telling Sheldon where the golden egg is. I know you are. I'm telling your daddy. I'm telling your daddy. The daddy rushed over there and separated those guys. This bickering has got to stop, he said. If you three can't behave yourselves, you won't be hunting for eggs at all. I smiled at that comment. That would be a nice development, I thought. After he finished scolding them, Lucille's daddy blew a whistle, and he told us to line up at the starting line. Everyone zoomed past me. I lifted my feet and stepped real careful. Then finally, I got there, and the daddy started telling us the egg hunt rules. Rule number one, he said, no running. Rule number two, no pushing, pulling, or grabbing. Rule number three, no trampling the flowers and plants. And finally, rule number four, do not go anywhere that is roped off. Now, I think those are very important rules to follow for your own Easter egg hunt. He looked up and down the line at us. Does everyone understand the rules? He asked. I thought for a minute. Then I raised my hand. Also, there is no tackling or scuffling, correct? I said, because I have already been informed about that situation. The daddy looked odd at me. Well, of course there's no tackling or scuffling, Jenny B, he said. That goes without saying. I thought some more. Then I pointed at my giant bunny feet. Plus, there should be no tripping the bunny, right? I asked, because the bunny is wearing unfair feet. The daddy frowned. There's no tripping anyone, Junie B, he said. I nodded. Yes, but there's especially no tripping the bunny, correct? I asked again. The daddy sucked in his cheeks. Mm, okay, fine. There's especially no tripping the bunny, he said. Now, may I continue? I smiled. The daddy continued. The hunt will begin when I count to three, he said. You will have 30 minutes to hunt for the eggs. When I blow my whistle, you will all stop hunting immediately and you will bring your baskets back to the table. Roger raised his hand. Uh, what's the prize for finding the most eggs? He asked. Lucille's mother smiled. Then she held up a big wad of flowers. The person who has the most eggs will receive this beautiful bouquet for his or her mother, she said. These irises from our flower garden, I picked them myself. Aren't they lovely? Roger looked at the irises. I think my mother would rather have a set of Power Rangers, he said. Lucille's mother made squinty eyes at him. That meant no Power Rangers, I believe. Just then, the daddy blew his whistle. Okay, is everyone ready to start? He hollered. Ready, we hollered back. Ready, ready, ready. And so the daddy raised his hand in the air, and one, two, three, the egg hunt was started. Chapter eight is called Swooping. The children ran. They ran everywhere, I tell you. They ran to and fro and up and down and back and forth and here and there. Also, Roger ran sideways, and Lenny ran in a circle. I watched them very fascinated. Some of the children were tackling and scuffling. Sheldon went through a shrub. That's when Lucille's daddy blew his whistle again. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Everyone come back here right now, he shouted real mad. Everyone came back. Sheldon had a stick in his ear. He sputtered and stuttered and pointed at May. She pushed me. She pushed me. May pushed me through a bush. May stamped her foot. No, I did not, Sheldon. I did not push you. You pushed yourself, she said. She turned and looked at the daddy. It was the darnest thing you ever saw, she said. He shoved himself right through that shrub. The daddy stood there a real long time. Then he walked to a picnic bench and he sat down real slow.
and he hit himself in the head. I went over and tapped on him. I would just like to point out that the bunny did not run, I said. The bunny was the only one who walked. May overheard me. That's because the bunny can't run or the bunny falls down, she said. The bunny should not get credit for that. The daddy hit himself in the head again. I walked back to Herbert. He looks kind of worried. The daddy is coming unglued, he said. I nodded. Yes, I said. The daddy is going to need backup, I believe. Backup is the grown-up word for the police might need to come, possibly. And guess what? Me and Herb were not the only ones thinking that either. Because just then, Lucille's Nana hollered real loud, Enough! She hollered. I've had enough of this nonsense with you children. Then she cupped her hands around her mouth and she shouted a brand new rule. It was called, If there's any more running or fighting, she is going to call the cops. All of the children did a loud gulp. I looked at Herbert. That new rule seems a little harsh, I said. Only guess what? The new rule worked, I think. Because pretty soon, the Nana started the egg hunt again. And this time, no one ran at all. No one even walked, hardly. Instead, we all behaved like little ladies and gentlemen, and we hunted for eggs, very polite. May stuck to Sheldon like glue. I tried to stick to him, too, but my giant feet could not keep up that good. May kept on grouching. You're not going to get the golden egg before I do, Sheldon. Even if you know where it is, I'll beat you to it, she said. I'm all over you like flies on egg salad. Sheldon rolled his eyes. But I don't know where the golden egg is, May, he said. I've already told you that. I don't know anything at all. I cupped my mitts around my mouth. I believe you, Sheldon. I believe you don't know anything at all, I shouted. I've never thought you'd known anything at all. After that, I hurried to catch up to him, because I definitely thought he knew something, of course. Sheldon turned to wait for me. Then, all of a sudden... He glanced down at the ground, and he did a loud gasp. I see one, I see one, I see one, he shouted. May and I turned to look. There was a bright green egg under the bushes. Sheldon clapped and laughed. Then he hurried over to pick it up. But whoosh, swoop, scoop. May ducked underneath him speedy fast, and she picked it up instead. I got it, I got it, I got it, she screeched. Then she put the egg in her basket and danced all around. Sheldon's face got sputtery mad. But before he could even yell at her, he did another gasp. I see one, I see one, I see one, he shouted even louder than before. Then he clapped his hands and he laughed real happy. And he hurried over to pick it up. But whoosh, swoop, scoop, May beat him to it again. And so there's May diving down for the eggs. I'm thinking Sheldon might not need to point out when he sees them. Two, two. Now I have two, she hollered. She jumped in the air and kicked her feet. I swooped. I'm a swooper. I swoop, she said. She ran back to Sheldon and leaned in his face. I knew I would beat you at this game, she said. Now I have two eggs and you and Junie B have. She leaned her head into her basket. Hmm, let's count them. Zero. You have zero and I have two. Two to zero. Two to zippity zip zero. Sheldon looked at me real upset. I frowned my eyes at him. Helpful hint, I said. Stop shouting. I see one. Sheldon pointed at his magic egg shirt. But I just can't get it, Junie B, he said. My grandpa said that the egg is with me, so why isn't this magic shirt working? I looked closer at the egg dribble. Maybe it's not lucky, I said. Maybe it's just dirty. Sheldon slumped his shoulders. Then he reached down his finger and he flicked off the egg. Only wait till you hear this. Just as he flicked it, his eyes got big and wide again. This time, I hurried to cover his mouth with my hand. But Sheldon shouted right through my palm mitt, 
I see one, I see one, I see one, he shouted. Then, before he could even move his feet, whoosh, swoop, scoop, May grabbed egg number three. She twirled in a happy circle around us. Three, two, zero, three, two, zero. It's three to zero, she yelled. Sheldon stood real still. Then very, very slow, he put down his basket and he stretched out the sides of his mouth with his fingers <laughs> and he stuck his tongue out at May. That was very appropriate behavior, I believe. After that, he snatched his basket up again and he tried to rush away from May. But too bad for Sheldon because May stayed right exactly on his heels. They were walking too fast for me to keep up. I stopped and watched them go. Then I did a big sigh. <sighs> and I walked to a tree stump. And I sat down very glum. I hate being this dumb bunny, I said. Because my feet are too big. And my, leg my legs are too slow. And my paw mitts are way too clumsy. I slumped my shoulders and looked in the empty basket. I did another sigh. Because let's face it, the bunny was a rotten egg. In our final chapter, chapter 9, says lucky bunny. So maybe Junie B. Jones's luck is about to change. Sheldon found three more eggs. May swooped all of them. Every time she swooped, she shouted her head off. Four, four, now I have four. Five, five, now I have five. Six, six, I just got six. Six was Sheldon's limit, apparently. He stomped to see my tree stump and threw his empty basket in the grass. That's it. I am done. I am not looking for one more egg for that girl. Let her find one egg. Let her find her own stupid eggs. I quit, he said. May came chasing after him. No, Sheldon, no. You can't quit. You can't. Come on, we're a team, she said. We're, we're team May. Sheldon did a huffy breath at her. No, we're not. We are not Team May, he grouched. I'm an egg finder, and you're some creepy swooping bird girl who steals them. May's mouth opened real shocked. I did not steal your eggs, Sheldon Potts. Those eggs were still in the grass when I picked them up. Just because you saw them first didn't make them yours, she said. Picking them up is what makes eggs yours. Sheldon started to yell back. Then he stopped and looked at me. Shoot, he said. I think she has a valid point there. May smiled real smuggy. Thank you, Sheldon, she said. You're not welcome, he said back. And I'm still not looking for any more eggs, May. I'm still quitting. May was not expecting that development. She started to sputter, but but you have to look for more eggs, Sheldon. You have to. Just a couple more eggs, and I can win this whole thing, she said. Plus, you still haven't found the golden egg for me yet. Just then, the Nana walked by. May reached out and grabbed her arm. Tell him, Nana. Tell him he can't quit, she said. Sheldon is on my team, and when you're on a team, you can't quit. It's not fair. The Nana looked puzzled for a second. Then she did a little frown and shook her head. Oh my, no, she said. I'm sorry, dear, but there are no teams on an egg hunt. An egg hunt is an individual, only one, competition. May did not like that answer. She pulled on the Nana's arm some more. But, but, Sheldon has to help me. He has to. He, the Nana interrupted her. If you don't let go of my arm, I'm going to give you a swat, dear, she said. May quick let go. The Nana smoothed herself out and walked on. Sheldon laughed real loud. <laughs> I like that Nana, he said. I smiled. I like that Nana too, I said. I nudged him with my elbow. Maybe someday she will be your Nana-in-law. Sheldon did a loud hoot. After that, we did a high five and a low five and a medium five. Then I scooted over so he could share my tree stump. Lucille spotted us there. Her whole face lighted up when she saw Sheldon. Chelsea, Chelsea, I've been looking for you. Where's your basket? She asked. Did you find the golden egg yet? Huh? Did you, Chelsea? Did you? Sheldon's face went funny. Um, well, my magic egg shirt didn't work out that good, Lucille, he said. I kept finding the eggs, but May kept swooping them. 
And so now I'm just sort of, well, you know, May butted her head in. Quitting, she hollered. He's quitting, Lucille. Tell him he can't quit. Tell him right now. Lucille raised her eyebrows. You're quitting, Chelsea? Why are you quitting? You have to find the golden egg, remember? She said. If you don't find the golden egg, I will have to swim in my pool with someone I don't actually care for. She started to get annoyed. Think of me, Sheldon. You have to think of me, she said. Don't you know anything about being a boyfriend? Boyfriends do not let their girlfriends swim with people they do not care for. Sheldon didn't answer. Lucille's face got madder. Sweat came on her head and lip. Well, for goodness sake, don't just sit there, Sheldon. Go find that egg, she snapped. Then she wiped her sweat on her expensive dress sleeve and she stomped away. Sheldon watched her go. Finally, he turned and looked at me. My little lamb did not actually handle that well, he said, kind of quiet. He paused a second. Also, she turned into a sweaty, dripping ball, he, he added. Just then, May stuck her head in between us. Come on, Sheldon, you heard what Lucille told you, she said. You have to find the golden egg. Come on, find it right now. Then she grabbed his arm and tried to pull him up, but Sheldon did not budge himself. He shook her off like she was a bug. I admire that style. After that, both of us sat there until the hunt was almost over. And then we started walking back to the picnic tables. Only too bad for me because I forgot to pick up my huge big feet and I fell in that grass again. And that's when it happened. I saw something gleaming. It was gleaming right in my eyes, I mean. I blinked and looked again. Then I tried to cover my mouth with my palm yet. But the words came rushing right out of my lips. The golden egg, the golden egg. I see the golden egg. May and Sheldon looked down and saw it too. For a second, all of us stood real frozen. And then, oomph, foomph, fifop. We all dived for it at once. And... Slap, slap, slap. We piled our hands on it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it, we shouted. Then suddenly, all of us got very silent, and we stared and stared at our hand pile. My heart started to pound. I stared some more. Then my mouth fell open, and I did a loud gasp. Because the egg was under my giant paw mitt, that's why. Oh my gosh, I really do got it. I hollered. Sheldon frowned. Are you sure? He asked. He wiggled his fingers to locate himself. Shoot, he said. I was hoping that big paw was mine. I looked odd at him. That was a joke, I hope. Well, at least you beat May, I said, real happy. Beating May is still good, Sheldon. Then, kaboom! May exploded like a firecracker. She yanked her hand off the top of the pile and she slapped it on the ground. He did not beat me, Junie Jones. Sheldon has zero eggs, and I have six. How can you say he beat me, you big dumb bunny? She yelled. That's when I exploded, too. I am not a dumb bunny, May, I shouted back. I am the celebrity of this whole entire occasion. Plus, you didn't even find one single egg on your own. And so I will show you how Sheldon can beat you. I will show you right exactly now, in fact. Then, without even thinking about it, I quick slid my paw mitt off of the golden egg and I let Sheldon's hand drop on top. There, ha, see, May? Now Sheldon has the golden egg and you don't. And the golden egg is the winner of this whole event, I said. May's eyes got big as bowls. Sheldon's eyes got big, too. He grabbed the egg in both of his hands, and he jumped up like a rocket. May slumped her face in the grass. Then, tweet, 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 the Nana blew the whistle, and that was that. The egg hunt was over. And so there's that. That's all of them piling up on the golden egg. And what a good friend of Jeannie B. Jones to give Sheldon that egg. Now, we do have one more chapter. It's just a couple of pages, chapter 10. And it's just a journal entry. It says, Monday, dear first grade journal. Today at school, Sheldon keeps hugging on me. Lucille keeps hugging on me. May keeps glaring at me. She needs anger management classes, I believe. I quit writing and thought about the party. 
May didn't win the most eggs, because guess who did? My friend Jose, that too. And guess who got to present the flowers to him? Me, the bunny. Jose was the happiest boy I ever saw. He jumped way high in the air. Las flores para mi madre, las flores para mi madre, he said. Muchas gracias, conejito. I giggled very happy. Conejito means bunny in Spanish, I think. I smiled at that memory. Then I started to write in my journal some more. Sometimes I'm not happy about giving the golden egg to Sheldon because I made that decision on the spur of the moment and I still want to swim in Lucille's hot water. Only here's the confusing thing. Sometimes I am happy about what I did for Sheldon because seeing his face made me smile inside. And so that is something for me to think about, I guess. And guess what else? I'm not calling May Dumb Bunny anymore, probably. Because bunnies aren't dumb, of course. And so now I'm going to call May a different name. Uh-oh, she just glared at me again. I think I will offer her a jelly bean, because that would be a nice gesture by me. Please stand by. I put down my pencil and reached into my pocket. Then I pulled out the candy bag I brought to school and held it out to her. Would you like a jelly bean, bird girl? I said very pleasant. May sputtered and stuttered very shocked. Then she quick raised her hand to tattle. Mr. Scary, Mr. Scary, Mr. Scary, she hollered. Mr. Scary looked back at us. His face did not look delightful. I ducked down my head, made it a gulp. Then she lowered her hand and started counting to 20. No action was taken. I smiled, very relieved. Then finally, I picked up my pencil one more time and I finished my journal page. May does not like her new name, apparently. That is going to work out just fine, I think. Have a hoppy day. Your friend, Junie B. Smart Bunny. And so this is what her journal entries look like. It's actually printed in Junie B.'s handwriting. And so that's the end of that. Have a happy Easter.